Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be making this really easy pullover crochet sweater. It's worked in griddle stitch so it's super warm and comfy. For this sweater I'm using two different colors of weight 4 yarn. So I have this main color here that I'm using for most of the sweater. I used about 900 meters of this yarn. And I have this other color here that's being just used for the top and I used about 500 meters of this color. I'm also using a 5 millimeter hook to make this sweater. So the front and back panel of this sweater are exactly the same, so I'm going to start with the bottom ribbing here. To start the ribbing, I'm going to do a chain up of 8. Once I have my chain, I'm going to chain one more, and this is just to build up the first stitch. It doesn't count as a stitch itself. Next, I'm going to go into the second chain from the hook here and place one single crochet. And I'm going to place one single crochet into each chain space along this chain for a total of eight single crochets. So now that I have my eight single crochets, I'm just going to turn this over and I'm going to chain one. Remember that this doesn't count as its own stitch, it's just to build up the first single crochet. So then I'm going to work into the back loops only for the ribbing. So I'm going to go into the very first stitch from the previous row, insert my hook and place one single crochet. And I'm going to work in the back loops only, placing one single crochet into each stitch. So keep in mind when you get to the end here, we're not going to place a single crochet into that chain one space. We're just going to put it into the last stitch and ignore the chain one from the previous row. So we're going to repeat this pattern with the single crochet back loop ribbing until our ribbing is long enough for the back or front panel of our sweater. I have my finished ribbing here and I worked a total of 86 rows of single crochet. Now we're going to turn this on its side so we can work up the body of the sweater. I'm going to start with a chain one and one single crochet into that first row of ribbing. And then I'm going to go into the second row of ribbing with a double crochet. And then a single crochet into the side of the next row. For the griddle stitch pattern, we're just going to be alternating between single and double crochets placing one into the side of each of the rows from the ribbing we just finished. I'm going to continue this till I get to the end and I'll come back. For the last two rows here, I'm placing a single crochet and then in the last row of ribbing here, I'm placing a double crochet. We should always end on a double crochet so that we can start all our rows on a single crochet. I'm going to turn over my work here and chain one and I'm going to place one single crochet into the first stitch space here. And then I'm going to place a double crochet into the next stitch space. I'm going to continue alternating between single and double crochets till I get to the end of the row. And keep in mind that each row should start with a single crochet and end with a double crochet. So we're going to continue working in this pattern until we want to make our color change. For our color change, we're just going to come down to the last stitch here, which is a double crochet. And I'm going to complete the stitch halfway. And before I do that final yarn over and pull through, I'm going to take my next color and just pull it through and pull the stitch tight. So the point where we do our color change is also the point where our sleeve will start when we work it off the body. So we want to make sure that we measure this ahead of time as well. And I'm going to work in the second color until this part measures from just below my armpit up to my shoulder.
once I have my front and back panels complete, I'm just going to mark out where I want my neckline to be. And then I'm going to place the front on top of the back panel and sew up the shoulder seams, making sure to leave enough space for my head to fit through. Once that's done, I'm just going to flip open the sweater so that we can work the sleeves off the side of the body here. So I'm going to take my main color yarn here and join it on the side of the sweater where we changed colors before because that'll be where the armpit is. I'm going to do a chain of one and into the same space I'm going to place a single crochet. And now I'm just going to work my griddle stitch all along that side where we changed colors. So I'm just evenly placing my single and double crochets along the side of this white portion of the sweater until I reach the other side. I just placed them as evenly as I could along the side here, working into the side posts of the stitches from the previous rows. And we're going to work in this pattern all the way until we get to the other side of the sweater where we changed colors on the other side. So when I get to the end of the color change here, my last stitch should be a double crochet. And I'm going to turn my work over and continue working in griddle stitch. So I'm going to work in griddle stitch normally for one row, starting with a single crochet and just working all the way across until I get to the end of the row. And when we get to the end here, we're going to turn our work and we're going to work on our first decrease row. So for a decrease at the beginning of the row, we need to look to the third stitch and see what it's going to be. So we can see here it's going to be a single crochet. So our first two stitches need to be double crocheted two together. I'm starting with a chain two, which doesn't count as a stitch. And then I'm going to insert a double crochet into that first stitch, finish it halfway, and then yarn over and start a double crochet into the second stitch. And then I'm going to yarn over and pull through all three loops on the hook to finish that decrease. Then our next stitch is going to be a single crochet. And then we can continue the row in regular griddle stitch until we get two stitches from the end where we're going to place our next decrease. So I'm down to the end of the row here and I have three stitches left. So my next stitch is a double crochet which means that my next stitch after that is a single crochet. So we need to single crochet the next two stitches together. Now I'm going to turn my work again and we're just going to alternate between rows of decrease and rows of regular griddle stitch. Now since we've done a decrease, our stitches are going to change the rows won't always start with single crochet. So we're going to start this next row with a double crochet because we need to put a double crochet into that single crochet stitch. So we do a chain up of two, which doesn't count as a stitch and put a double crochet into that first stitch. And then again, just alternating between single and double crochets all the way down this row. When I get to the end of my row here, I'm putting one single crochet into the top of that double crochet decrease. Now I'm going to turn my row again, and it's a decrease row this time, so I'm going to look to the third stitch, so we can see that it's going to be a double crochet, so I'm going to single crochet the first two stitches together, just because it needs to be opposite of what we're making that third stitch. So I'm single crochet these two together, and then I'm going to place a double crochet into that next stitch. So you can see it's starting to decrease here along the side, which is exactly what we want. Then I'm going to work in griddle stitch as normal till I get to the last two stitches in this row. So I'm at my last two stitches. It's going to be a double crochet, so I'm just going to double crochet two together. Then I'm going to turn over my row, and it's going to be a row of regular griddle stitch. So I'm just going to chain one, 
place a single crochet into the top of those double crochets and a double crochets into the top of the single crochets until I get to the end of the row and then I'm just going to continue alternating between a row of regular griddle stitch and a row of decrease until the sleeve is about two times as wide as I want my cup to be so when it gets to this point I'm just going to continue working straight in griddle stitch until the sleeve is about two inches shorter than I would like the finished sleeve to be once I have that finish, I'm going to fold the sweater in half so that I can sew up the sleeve and the side seam. To do this, I'm just going to work on the wrong side of the sweater and use a single crochet to seam everything up. I'm going to find the first two points by the cuff of the sleeve. And I'm going to insert my hook and I'm going to place one single crochet. And then I'm going to match up my stitches on the front and back and just continue placing single crochets all the way down. Once that's all seamed up, then we're going to turn the sweater so that the right side is facing out and we're going to work on the cuff of the sleeve. So I'm going to join my yarn anywhere on the cuff and then I'm going to pull through the yarn and secure it and then I'm going to chain one, which doesn't count as a stitch, and place one single crochet into the same stitch space. Then I'm just going to go ahead and place one single crochet into each stitch space all the way around this cuff. When I get back to the beginning here where I started, I'm going to find my first single crochet and join these two ends with a slip stitch. Then I'm going to turn this over and I'm going to chain one and I'm going to place single crochet decreases all the way along this row. So insert your hook into the first two stitches and pull up a loop then yarn over and pull through all three. And I'm going to do this decrease all the way around the cuff. Yarn over through those both stitches, yarn over and pull through all three. Yarn over through both stitches and yarn over pull through all three. I'm going to do this all the way till I get back to the beginning. Now I'm going to go under the first single crochet decrease and join with a slip stitch. Now to do the ribbing for the cuff, I'm going to do a chain up of 8. When I get to the end, I'm going to chain one more, which doesn't count as a stitch, and then I'm going to come into the second chain from the hook with a single crochet. And then I'm going to place one single crochet in each chain space along this chain, until I get back to the bottom. Once I'm at the bottom here, I'm going to secure this into the next available stitch space with a slip stitch. And then I'm going to place a slip stitch into the next stitch as well. I'm going to turn this over and these slip stitches count as a turning chain. I'm going to come into the third stitch here and then I'm going to ignore these two slip stitches and place one single crochet into the back loop only of that single crochet stitch. And then I'm going to place one single crochet into the back loop only all the way along that previous row of stitches. I get to the end here, I want to make sure I'm placing my last single crochet into that stitch and not the chain one. Then I'm going to turn my work over and I'm going to work single crochets in the back loop only of those eight stitches once again until I get to the bottom. Once I'm at the bottom here, after I place my last single crochet into that final stitch, 
I'm going to go to the next available stitch along the cuff and then we're going to place one more slip stitch into the next stitch as well and then we're just going to repeat this to finish the cuff working up and down in rows of ribbing and securing them along the way and we're going to do this all the way until we run out of stitches along the cuff once we've completed our cuff all the way around we just need to join the two sides together with a seam so I'm just going to slip stitch this together working through the front loop of the last row of stitches that we did and working through the foundation chain as well just slip stitch it all together once I get to the bottom here I'm going to finish my last slip stitch cut the yarn and chain one to finish And that is the completed cuff. Now we're going to do the exact same thing for the neckline. So I'm going to join my yarn again the same way that I did before. Chain up one. And I'm going to single crochet all the way around the neckline the same way that we did the cuff. When I get to the end, I'm going to slip stitch under the first single crochet to join those two sides. Next, I'm going to do a chain up of four because I want the ribbing on my collar to be much shorter. And then I'm going to chain one more, which doesn't count as a stitch. Come into the second chain from the hook with a single crochet and single crochet all the way down that chain. I get to the end of my chain I'm going to secure it with a slip stitch into the next available stitch and I'm going to slip stitch into the stitch next to that as well so we're going to work the ribbing now the same way that we did for the cuffs so we're going to skip those two slip stitches and work a single crochet through the back loop of the third stitch and put one single crochet into each stitch from the row before we're going to turn again, chain one, place one single crochet into each stitch through the back loop only. And when we get to the end, we're going to secure it with a slip stitch into the next available stitch. And we're going to slip stitch into the stitch after that as well. And then we'll just continue working in this pattern until we're back at the beginning of the collar and then we're going to seam it up the same way that we did the cuffs once we finish the collar all we have left to do is weave in any loose ends and the sweater's finished thank you guys for watching hopefully you enjoyed this sweater be sure to like and subscribe if you did and we'll catch you in the next one